May I come in, sir? Come in. Good morning, sir. Good morning, ma'am. Good morning. Have your seat, Chiranjeev. Thank you, sir. Chiranjeev, hopefully you have taken your vaccines. Yes, sir. Both the doses. Yes, sir. So you may remove your mask. Thank you, sir. Introduce yourself. Sir, my name is Chiranjeev Anand. I come from Devgarh district of Jharkhand. I did my schooling from Jharkhand itself. Then I moved to Delhi, where I completed my BA honors in political science from Deshbandhu College of Delhi University. I am preparing for civil services since last two years. This is my second attempt and my first interview. My interests include reading about ancient Indian philosophies and trying to understand the relevance in everyday life. Okay, who was uh, Deshbandhu? Who was called Deshbandhu? Sir, there are two Deshbandhus. One, the popular one, who is uh, C. R. Das, Chitranjan Das ji, who is called as Deshbandhu, and my college is named after uh, Rati Ram Deshbandhu Gupta. He was also called Deshbandhu. His title was given to him by Swami Sraddhanand and uh, Mahatma Gandhi. Okay. So, what was the philosophy of Swami Sraddhanand? You are interested in philosophy of ancient India, and Sraddhanand also worked in. That means he was also influenced by ancient philosophy. So, what was his philosophy? Sir, Swami Sraddhanand belonged to the Arya Samaj school of thought, who believed that uh, Vedas are the infallible rock of India, and uh, all the Indian uh, social and other systems must essentially be based on the Vedic past. Okay. So, do you um, believe that this is true? Should we try to imbibe the Vedic ideas today? Sir, the Vedic ideas that were relevant for India have already been incorporated in our constitution. Uh, by the debates of the Constituent Assembly. So, which are the which uh, Vedic ideas are incorporated, and where? Sir, if I uh, particularly point out the idea of uh, the fundamental rights that are given to us, uh, is also derived from the Vedic ideas because it talks about Raj Dharma, where even the Raja is under the rule of Dharma. Therefore, the fundamental rights will act as trump cards to protect the citizens. From the onslaught of uh, administrative authorities, then we have the directive principles, wherein even we have the images of uh, Lord Krishna in carved, who is giving lessons to Arjuna about the dilemmas dilemmas of life. Similarly, the directive principles will act as the touchstone and guide light for India to walk on the path that we require for socio-economic development. Okay, any other idea which is influenced the Constitution? What is the world view of the Constitution of India? Sir, the Constitution of India is essentially a syncretic constitution that stands at the crossroads of major constitutional ideas. It has incorporated different views like liberalism, socialism, and all other strands within itself, trying to produce a grand synthesis of what India essentially stands for: plurality, diversity, and respect for human rights. So, do you think that Indian constitution is being practiced by the government of India, particularly in the crisis which is there in Ukraine? Sir, I believe the government of India is providing a moral nudge to Russia as well that the problems must essentially be solved by peaceful and other methods like dialogues and negotiations. However, we also understand that there are power dynamics involved in international relations, and we are trying to uh, traverse the path that is the golden mean between strict ideological proclivities of uh, Article Fifty One and the. Uh, Realism that is going on in the international politics today. The government has decided to continue to buy oil from Russia and also gas, in spite of the sanctions imposed by the Western countries. Do you think this is going to prove counterproductive for India in the long run? Sir, in the long run, I am not able to conceptualize whether it will be counterproductive. However, in the short run, it will essentially. Benefit us in the economic realm because uh, other countries are not taking oil and gas from Russia. Therefore, it becomes an opportunity for us to in cash upon. However, we continue to uh, provide moral pressure on Russia so that the war stops uh, at a very uh, very soon. Do you think this will be effective if we continue to buy oil and gas from Russia and still try to exert moral pressure? Will this pressure will be effective? So the world order today is based on strategic autonomy, where we have to traverse. Through multiple poles and triangles that are existing in the world today, there are multiple power structures. I believe the policy of government of India is more realistic in its outlook than being more idealistic. Okay, Chandrajeev, thank you. Chiranjeev. Yes, ma'am. You have studied PSIR. Yes, ma'am. Uh, who is your favorite 
philosopher in political science? Ma'am, from uh, Western philosophers or Indian philosophers as well? Tell me both one. Ma'am, from Western philosophy, I like the philosophy of Hannah Arendt. Okay. And from Indian philosophy, I like Sri Aurobindo's philosophy. And what is the philosophy of Hannah Arendt? Hannah Arendt talks about uh, phenomenological approach. She says that uh, ideologies do not matter. When it comes to human suffering, only the one who has suffered will understand what the problem was. So she says that to understand Nazism, one has to be a Jew in the Germany of Hitler. So I believe that it is more realistic understanding of it. Rather than putting people under the garb of ideological giants, it essentially places human beings at the center of every debate. And why Aurobindo's philosophy you like? Ma'am, Rabindranath Tagore said that India will come to know the essence of India through the writings of Sri Aurobindo. Sri Aurobindo tried to incorporate different streams of thought into his ideology. He talked about integral yoga, hmm. which includes the attributes of nischay, tap and sadhana. And I am uh, moved by these, uh, this synthesis of his ideas. But while you are very impressed with the phenomenological uh, idea, uh, thinking of Western philosopher, but philosophy of Aurobindo, uh, sir, is a little abstract because he talks about superhuman and uh, taking the life to another level. So, how do you reconcile one in one uh, direction? You are uh, you are uh, attracted to reality, and in uh, Indian philosophy, you are attracted to abstractism. Ma'am, that could be because it is often said. In a stereotypical form, the West often represents the materialism, whereas the East represents the spiritualism. Therefore, I have incorporated the best of both worlds. <laughs> okay, okay. So, you are from Jharkhand. Yes, ma'am. Uh, if we gauge the strengths and the weaknesses of uh, Jharkhand as a state, tell me two strengths and two weaknesses. Ma'am, the strength of Jharkhand would be that it has a rich resource base, which it can use for its industrialization. And other strength would be that it has a very rich tribal culture. And since it stands, since it is present in the periphery of Bihar, Uttar, Uttar Pradesh and West Bengal, it, it is a crucible that contains the cultures of all these states. So it can become the cultural capital of India. Okay. And coming to the shortcomings, I would like to point out that Jharkhand suffers from the resource curse. In spite of having so much resources, the level of industrialization has not been able to optimally utilize those resources. And the second fact is that we have a lot of political uncertainty. In the last 22 years, we have seen more than, more than 10 times the chief ministers changing. So there is no policy certainty with, with regard to any uh, administrative policy. Okay. So uh, you just uh, told me about uh, the tribal culture. So let's take a situation. You are posted in a district where uh, you are in, you in, encounter a very rich tribal culture of painting and now you want to commercialize it because you also uh, realize that these tribal people are not having money with them so you want to you want to make that activity remunerative to them so you want to commercialize it but as you commercialize you realize that touch to the tribal culture is losing what will you do then ma'am initially i would talk about my plans with the tribal leaders and try to explain them the benefits of economic commercialization that would uh, accrue along with uh, that I would bring about if I commercialize those products. However, I would also try to understand their point of view if they are not willing to commercialize. Having said that, I would also bring about the example of the paintings that are particularly famous in Madhubani, which have been commercialized and have led to livelihood opportunities for millions of women in the uh, Mithila area of Bihar. In Jharkhand itself, we see uh, the paintings of Sohrai and Khovar. The Khovar is drawn by everybody in Jharkhand. Even those who are not non-tribals have assimilated the Khovar paintings in their weddings and other ceremonies. So it is essentially, it has become a part of Jharkhand, Jharkhand's culture. So I would like to point out to the tribals that it would be a matter for their pride if that becomes a symbol of Jharkhand as well as of India. Thank you so much, Chiranjeev. Chiranjeev, yes. uh, you have PSIR optional. Yes, sir. So, uh, let me give you a statement and the statement is that uh, the US has done the right thing in the wrong manner. Now you have to explain this statement in context of the US withdrawal from Afghanistan. Sir, USA is sometimes referred to as the unpredictable states of America because of the unpredictability in its policies. Therefore, initially when it uh, 
plunged into uh, into Afghanistan, it must have thought that it would be able to control the situation within a few years. However, the drain of resources that it continued for more than two decades forced it to withdraw. However, the withdrawal has been criticized because it was sudden and uh, sudden withdrawal rather than being incremental in its approach. Moreover, the regional players had not been taken into confidence. Therefore, right. And if we talk about uh, India's Afghanistan policy, uh, how do you see it? Like uh, many experts are saying that, uh, uh, like what India has done in Afghanistan uh, shows that uh, India is now left with no options in Afghanistan because India has not dealt with Taliban in any official capacity for so long. When the writing was very clear on the wall that Taliban is coming back to power. Yes. Sir. So, is it a foreign policy failure uh, from India's point of view? Sir, there are two streams of thought with regard to this policy. First is called as the Panipat policy and the other is called as the uh, rapid onslaught policy, which we say the Hindu Kush policy. So, India is right now f following the Panipat policy, which has been criticized by C. Raja Mohan and Harshvi Panth as well, who say that India has done an Afghan model. Instead of going into, plunging into the crisis and trying to safeguard its interest, it is just shouting from the sidelines. However, if India had gone to Afghanistan as well, then the problems which we saw in Sri Lanka Litte episode could have been, uh, a repetition of that could have been there in Afghanistan as but well. But why India delayed so much uh, in opening up uh, negotiations with Taliban when all the other countries, including China, <laughs> Russia, all other countries were doing that? Is it not a sign of uh, strategic failure? Sir, Gandhiji always wanted India to be the moral voice of the world. Had India negotiated from the very beginning, Taliban would have gained greater legitimacy. Therefore, to ensure but that... But what that about morality when it comes to Ukraine crisis? There, it doesn't seem that India is uh, uh, doing the moral thing by opposing uh, the Russian aggression. Sir, India is trying to do the moral thing in its capacity because it is it has a limited power it itself is not a superpower, it is itself a rising aspirational power. So, in tune with the uh, power dynamics that are going on in the world politics today, India has... So, you are okay with India's stand of staying neutral in a choice between good and bad? We are staying neutral. Sir, we are staying relatively neutral, but uh, there has been an undercurrent of going, uh, nudging of uh, uh, Russia towards going uh, back on, on, on the borders. Okay, Chiranjeev, uh, you are a student of PSIR. So, let me ask you a question that uh, if an Indian voter is going to vote in election, which is more likely, the voter getting into an accident and dying or the voters vote, that individual voters vote, changing the outcome of that election, which is more likely? Sir, I would prefer the second option, I would say that. No, you would prefer the second option, but which is more likely. Let us uh, take dying away from that question, but meeting an accident the person getting into an accident or the person's vote changing the outcome of an election, which is more likely to happen. Sir, while analyzing Indian elections, Mukulika Banerjee also points out that there is power inversion that takes place during the election cycle, wherein the voters feel that they have become empowered vis-a-vis -vis the leaders only for few months of the year. Therefore, I feel that that is the ideal moment to put pressure on the government and vote rather than uh, care about other externalities. Okay, my final question to you and uh, that is about the Jharkhand government also bringing about a bill to reserve 75% of the jobs for locals. So, uh, if all the states uh, do that, do you think it is good for India as a nation or like it is going to create a lot of problems? Sir, I feel this is basically a cosmetic solution to a deep structural reform that was needed because the jobs are very less and there is... But Almost uh, many states are following this model. So, what is the way out? So, the way out could be incentivizing the formation of more industries that are labor intensive. Do you support Jharkhand government's stand on this? Sir, even the Supreme Court has said that this will lead to balkanization of India in economic terms. Therefore, I do not support such policies. Okay, thank you. Chiranjeev, how are you feeling? Fine, sir. Uh, what is the meaning of your name, by the way? Sir, Chiranjeev means one who has a long life. Okay, one who has a long life. Uh, what happened to the life expectancy rate of, in India? I mean, why the health parameters are continuously deteriorating? People are good, uh, people are not living healthy lifestyle. Uh, why, why, why it is so? 
do you find any reason or there is some uh, uh, shortcomings in the health policy making of, um, on the part of government do you see any do you see any any merit in this argument sir with regard to the health health expectancy i'd like to point out that since the time of independence the health expectancy of indians ha on an average has increased however there are problems related to the infant mortality and i'm not talking about the it has though increased but you see they are uh, they used to have blood pressure medicines now they are having they are actually relying more upon the medicines instead of healthy lifestyle uh, india is a modern democracy don't you think it is a it is establishing a healthy trend in that context sir the rise of sedentary lifestyle could be an important reason why people are getting prone to blood pressure and diabetes related issues india has often been called as the diabetic capital of the world though we are sweet people we should not have been called so i feel okay you were talking about elections per se yes rise of regional po political parties are now becoming the reality is now they are more or less acquiring the national space uh, but many political sociologist also political scientist points out that when rise, regional political parties tend to rise there happens to be that in future there would be a possibility of unstable government or the government with coalition that will come into picture do you see anything uh, in this in the present context will it be a good step towards a democracy or will it will it not be a, a healthy tradition that is actually happening so the rise of coalition politics represents the trend of deepening of democracy that is taking place in india because there is rise of multiple viewpoints however a healthy coalition culture is also needed it is the absence of healthy coalition culture which is leading to fragmentation and an instability in the governments uh, so you you favor uh, coalition politics over stable government is that your view that means the coalition government is more required right now or the stable government is required more right now sir a stable government which accommodates different viewpoints a stable government which accommodates different viewpoints uh, let's talk about judicial reform uh, uh, chief honorable chief justice ramana also talked about infrastructural issues that are actually happening in india national judicial infrastructure authority why there has been so much of issues associated with the infrastructure of the judiciary per se and people we are actually facing lot of problem these days in relation in in, in, in with regard to the uh, when it comes to trial of the cases pendency the, the uh, we have seen many a times that uh, the justice delivery system is not performing well so uh, do you point any reason in that context can you tell me uh, why we have been so much uh, suffering in this we have been delayed in this regard do you find any reason sir the absence of infrastructure is one reason the absence of trained manpower could be other reason even the absence of a policy that incorporates the that is not victim centric rather it is culprit centric so it is leading to unnecessary delays in administ uh, in administration of justice rather than going for a uh, we should go for a victim centric policy that incorporates the interest of the victim and try to solve the issues at so what is national judicial authority that is being talked about that is infrastructure authority what is that sir i'm not exactly aware of uh, national judicial infrastructure authority that is being discussed and talked about Uh, many a times the central has given the central government has recently given the proposal in this regard sorry sir i have to read more on okay. this have you heard of national court national court of authority this word no sir so you have not heard okay okay uh, tell me uh, what is the difference between central sp uh, sponsored scheme and central sector scheme sir in a central sector scheme the central government provides uh, the entire funds however in a centrally sponsored schemes as agreed between the center and the states it could vary between 60 40 ratio or a 70 30 ratio moreover with regard to other geographical terrain that is difficult for example the northeast or initially when jammu and kashmir was a state then the center used to provide 90% of the funds okay, that's all for my side chair in chief yes ma'am while talking to ma'am when i'm asked you about uh, two negatives of jharkhand you did not focus on on any of the social issues whereas The recent Niti Aayog report suggests that Jharkhand faced the second worst on multi-dimensional poverty and yes. also on malnourishment. You don't think that as a problem? Yes, ma'am. That is an equally important problem. And then why didn't you bring it to light? Since only two were asked, like could point out. And you out don't those. think should this should be there in the first two? Sorry, ma'am. These are more important issues. Okay, no worries.
the whole idea of jharkhand being cleaved from bihar was that it should develop on its own pace and in a better way because then it would have its own resources to take care of you talked about the resource scarcity but on these issue why do you think that bihar uh, sorry jharkhand is consistently lagging and it's just faring better than bihar nobody else what is the main issue over here i mean in terms of human development yeah in terms of human development with regards to poverty and malnourishment and because at the grassroots the administration has not been able to meet the trust of the people particularly the tribals therefore there is a kind of power asymmetry which exists the tribals are not willing to share their problems with the administration neither the administration is so accommodative to cater to their interests this has led to a widening gulf between the communities and the administration so in your capacity what advice would you give to administration apart from you have to close the gap of trust what else can be done to fight this issue at an urgent basis ma'am first this requires urgent yes ma'am response right yeah first would be the usage of optimal technology so that neither people are left behind as we saw in the case of aadhar linking of some people who were died because of midday meal not being available a uh, food not being made available to them and the second would be proper training of the staff that is available at the grassroots because they will essentially re- relate with the people uh, on a daily basis okay i see that your father is a lawyer yes ma'am uh, there has been a ground breaking achievement recently when the first openly gay judge has been uh, appointed to delhi high court are you aware of this sorry ma'am i have not read about it okay uh, it's just a saurabh kirpal and he has been appointed to delhi high court can you tell me what is the impact of this appointment on society as a whole ma'am this would lead to positive role modeling in the society in the earlier times as well we used to be accommodative of such diversities it was only owing to the victorian morality that we incorporated in the later years that we became that we developed a kind of stereotypical figure towards these people even last year i saw in the padma awards manjamma jogti was given padma award which was also a positive role modeling which the society needed so as to include their interest in nation building as well they are also a part of we the people okay uh my last question to you uh in your interest you have written innovative games requiring no equipments yes ma'am okay can you suggest us one such game which would require no equipment right now ma'am while sitting or however you deem perfect ma'am while sitting we can play a game which is called as sukh and dukh whenever i say sukh we all will do our hands like this whenever i say dukh the hands will be done like this this will point out to the to the fact that life is a game of sukh and dukh together both are intrinsic part of life and must be must not be given over uh, uh, importance but how do you play it like just keep uh, rotating the hand that's I, all there there are no winners in this game yes ma'am there yes. are winners okay 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 chiranjeev yes recently government announced a new foreign trade policy Are you aware when it was announced and for which period it has been announced? Sorry, sir, I'm not exactly aware of that policy. Okay, and do you distinguish between a foreign trade policy and an exim policy? Is there any difference between the two, foreign trade policy and exim policy? Sir, though I'm not exactly aware, if you allow, I take a guess. Okay, sir, exim policy would relate to the narrow confines of merely exports and imports. whereas the foreign trade policy would be more in incorpor- uh, incorporative of the ideas like foreign trade agreements and other custom duty uh, arrangements as well okay recently the prime minister visited uh, another country and signed a free trade agreement are you aware which country we have recently signed with this kind of agreement free trade agreement so recently i remember we signed a free trade agreement with uae yeah of course so what are the details of this agreement sir it was one of the most ra- uh, agreement that was done at most rapid pace within a period of just 30 to 40 days we were able to carve a free trade agreement it is for the first time that a model of internationalization of indian education has started wherein we would start a iit in uae and uh, they have access to certain goods and services in india 
though I am not exactly aware of the details. Okay. Which country is the biggest trading partner of India? Sir, China. Are you sure? Not exactly. Which country is the second biggest partner and third biggest partner? Trading partner, of course. Sir, USA is the second biggest trading partner. Okay. And uh, third, I am not aware of. Sir. Okay. I just so as a student of political science and international relations, don't you take interest in international trade? No, sir, I do, I do take interest, but since last few days, I have not been able to properly read the current affairs. Okay. What is the state of globalization nowadays? Where is globalization placed? Are we moving forward? Sir, globalization has faced several reversals as well because of the COVID wave and the rising protectionist trends in the uh, world economy wherein we see the calls of America first or Atmanirbhar Bharat wherein globalization has receded. However, it has also pointed out to the lacunae that exist in globalization. The way forward could be a more ethical model of globalization for the future. So, do you think this uh, Atmanirbhar Bharat uh, is consistent with the idea of globalization? Sir, as we see just a, uh, yesterday's news that we have crossed 400 billion dollars of export. So, Atmanirbhar Bharat was a force multiplier for India to achieve that goal. But Atmanirbhar Bharat, do you think that it is uh, uh, designed to promote exports or is it designed to restrict imports and discourage imports? Sir, I would not see it in a narrow sense of mercantilism that it just increases exports and reduces imports. Rather, it tries to build domestic capacity for being the global leader in terms of providing goods and services to the world. So, which are the thrust areas under this Atmanirbhar Bharat campaign? So, several sectors have been identified like uh, the electronic sector where production link incentive scheme is also being implemented. Then we could take advantage of the leather sector. Uh, there is some confusion, even government documents. PLI scheme is production linked scheme or productivity linked scheme? And is there any difference between the two expressions? Sir, it is based on incremental production. Okay. Rather than what it was doing initially, whatever the gain that it has made, Based on that gain, the government would incentivize the production of any product. And do you see any difference between the two? Productivity linked incentive and production linked incentive? Sir, MSMEs in India are considered to follow the moral hazard that they are not scaling up. So, they should act as a nudge for MSMEs to scale up and increase their production. Okay. Nice talking to you, Chiranjeev. Your interview is over. You may go now. Thank you, sir. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. May I come in, sir? Come, Charanjeev. Have your seat. Thank you. Uh, this is overall your third attempt and is it the first time inter going for interview? Sir, this is my second attempt and my first interview. Okay, second attempt and first interview. That's good. Great news. So, uh, I think you have thought about your performance. How do you rate it? Sir, I don't think it was very good. Okay, one. One opinion. What else? So, if, you, if it is not very good, uh, have you identified some areas for improvement? Yes, particularly the economic areas. Okay, one thing. What else? More I could not understand how. See, uh, 6th April is date of your interview. So, content, uh, of course, you you will read in next 5-6 days. Uh, but uh, don't bother much about it. Of course, uh, the economic area of economy which is related to trade, particularly your second paper syllabus, globalization, liberalization, economic policy. And it's uh, because you have said that you like studying philosophy so it's a philosophical background was the philosophical uh, underpinning of this different schemes including national monetization scheme kind of things see but overall we are very happy and optimistic about your performance thank you um, the parameters which we use to judge your, anybody's performance your entry is good uh, you greeted the board members well your sitting posture is good, quite stable, you look gracious, your dress sense is uh, great and uh, I, I'm not very sure about the color of the tie with this kind of uh, color of suit, but it's fine, you can take a relook. Okay, sir. I don't say this is not uh, looking nice. So, if you could suggest some other? I think… Formal tie, generally people prefer red. Red. Thank you. A maroon kind maroon, of tie. Maroon, 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 exactly maroon. So Thank you go you. to a shop and say formal tie. Okay. And hand placement was good, it was stable. Most of the answers were very effective. Your communication skill is very good. Your communication is a good flow. You've got good word power. 
you were able to bring in the appropriate words which you needed to express your opinion. Uh, so almost on every parameter we are very happy and actually we don't want to suggest anything to change. You are, we suggest you just to sustain it, continue with it. But just as a kind of value addition, yes, sir. Uh, without taking a stress about it, watch your video carefully, find certain occasions where you could be more precise and more objective. On some questions, uh, your answers are a little lengthier. Yes. It appeared that there is a kind of overplay of philosophy in your answer. So you have to be, sometimes you have to be analytical and you have to play that philosophy part. Yes. But at the same, you have to show the other skills also in your personality. That wherever there is a need for objectivity and quick decisions and to the point briefing to your seniors or juniors. So sometimes that skill should also be displayed. Yes. So that you can display diversity of your personality. So only on that parameter, I think a little bit uh, ponder over it. Yes. Sir. And try to, without taking very serious note of it. Because overall, whatever you are, you are very good. You are one of the best candidates we have seen. This Thank season. you, sir. That's it. Best of luck. Thank you, sir. Thank you.